Can you see this clearly? Yes, sir. All right. All right, so last week we started with organic chemistry. So we looked at the different one of the series. We looked at general formulas, functional groups, naming, alkanes, all right? So we're just going to do a quick recap, all right? So I'm going to put the functional group and you'll tell me the whole molecular series to which it belongs. So we have functional group A, B, C, and D. So what is the functional group for A? Which functional group does alcohol. which formula does series alcohols, right? And this one? Carboxylic acid. Correct, carboxylic acid. And the carbon to carbon single bond? Alkene. And the carbon to carbon double bond? Alkene. Alkene. Right, correct. I want you to tell me if these are alkenes or alkanes. So it's a mixture of alkenes and alkanes. So starting with A, is it an alkene or alkene? An alkene. All right, one said alkene, one said alkene. One said alkene and one said alkene. All right, what are you using to know if it's alkene or alkene? Sir, because in alkene, mm -hmm. um, you don't add the two. And right. So the, the general formula for alkene, tell me, it. what is the general formula for alkene? H, C times T. C and H, 2N, right? Mm -hmm. And for the alkene, it is what? C N A N H two N plus plus two. So remember, N is the amount of carbons, right? So if you have an alkane with two carbons, if you have an alkane with two carbons, the amount of hydrogen should be two times two plus two. So two two is four, four and two is six. So if you have an alkene with two carbons, it should have six hydrogen. If you have an alkene with two carbons, C2H2 times two. So two, two is four. So if you have an alkene, alkene with two carbons, according to the general formula, the amount of hydrogen is twice the amount of carbons. So if you have two carbons, you should have Four hydrogens, that's for alkene. If it was the alkane, it's 2n, so 2 times 2 plus 2, which would give us 6. So clearly, compound A is an alkene. All right, so this one is an alkene. So if you get the molecular formula, you have to use the general formula to determine which is the alkene and which is the alkene, right? Or if you can remember, all you need to do for the alkene, it must have twice the amount of hydrogen as carbon. So two carbon, four hydrogen. For the alkene, it must have twice the amount of hydrogen plus two more. So in this case, if you have three carbons, for B, if you have three carbons and it was an alkene, how many hydrogen should it have? Six. Right. It should have twice the amount of hydrogen. 
So if it has three carbons, it should have six hydrogen. But if it is an alkane, how many hydrogens it should have? Eight. Right. As three, two, six, six and two is eight. Right. For compound C, is it alkene or alkane? Alkane. Right. Because clearly, it does not fit the alkene general formula. Five twos, that's ten. So we don't have ten hydrogen, it cannot be an alkene. Right. And compound D? Alkene. Alkene. Right. Because clearly, we have twice the amount of hydrogen as carbon. So these are simple one marks question that can come on C cigarette. Just be given the molecular formula and you are to determine the compound, whether it's an alkene or alkene. All right, so we said that this is an alkene, this is an alkene, this is also an alkene. And this is an alkene. Now, what is the name of this alkene? If it has two carbons. If you have two carbons, what's the prefix? Meth. No, meth is one carbon. Ethane. Ethane. So let's just quickly, let's just quickly look back. If it's one carbon, what's the meth. prefix? Meth. meth. All right. If it's two carbon, it is e. F. F. And C three is pro. 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 Right. C four is what? Mu. Mu. All right. And C five. And. 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 C six is X. 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 And C7 is? Step. 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 All right. So remember, when we're doing the naming, the first part of the name is based on the amount of carbon atoms. And the second part of the name is based on the O molecule series. So once it's an alkane, it will end in A. Once it's an alkene, it will end in E. So compound A, it has two carbons, so it must start with what? F. All right, F. And, it's an, and it's an alkene, right? So it must end in what? In. In, right? So compound A is? Ethene, right? Ethene. Right. And C3, it would be what? Propane. Propane, because it's an alkene with three carbons. C5, it would have been? Methane. So compound A, yes. just a second. So this is ethene, this is propane, pentane, and the last one is heptene. Heptene, correct. Heptene. All right. So that's just a quick recap. I'm going to draw this structure for propane and pentane. When we look at the, after we're done with alkanes, we're going to look at alkenes, all right? So this was just a little recap. So I want somebody to tell me how to draw propane, the displayed formula for propane and then pentane. Again, it's being recorded, so if you miss anything, you can watch it afterwards. All right, so how do I draw propane? Somebody. The display formula. Who want to help me? First, you have to have um, three carbon, which is single right. bond. That is correct. So three carbons single bonded to each other. 
And then the bonds to, sh to show the hydrogen. All right, each carbon should have how oh, many bonds? Three. No, overall. Four. 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 Right. So for this one, how oh, many should this one have? How many more? All right, one above, one below, one to the left. How many should this one get? How many more? Two. All right, one above, one below. How many should this one get? Three. Three again. All right, one above, one below, one to the right. And we know that at the end of every line, we should put a hydrogen. All right, so that's propane. Let's do the, so this is the display formula. Let's do the condensed one immediately. So how should I go about getting the condensed formula based on this display formula? There you go, split them. All right, separate the each carbon atom. Yes, sir. All right, and then? Yeah, so the first, the first carbon is CH3. Right. So we always start with the first carbon atom. And we don't, we ignore whatever is in front of it. All right, so ignoring everything in front, as don't be pointed out, we have three hydrogens. So it is CH3. So after I'm finished with this carbon, what next? Okay, move on to the second one, which is CH2. All right, move to the second one, and it has how many hydrogens? Two. All right, so it's CH2. And then I move to the, the final carbon, one. and it has? Three hydrogens, CH3. Three hydrogens, All right. So this is the displayed formula for propane. And this is the condensed formula for propane. All right. Ready for pentane now? All right. Who want to let me draw pentane? So, um, yes. It's right. fine. So let's go. Pentane. And I'm going to draw how many carbons now? Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, each carbon should have a total of how many bonds? Four bar. Four. So one above, one to the right, one below. One above, one below. All right. And then at the end of every line, we put our hydrogen. All right, and that's it. Again, for the condensed formula, let's just separate each carbon atom. Okay. So again, starting with the, the first carbon, it has one, two, three hydrogens attached. This one has two hydrogens. This one has two hydrogens. This one has two hydrogens, and this one as three hydrogens, all right? Now remember, look, if you look at this, right? When you start off with the CH3 group, you can see that we have one, two, three consecutive CH2 groups. So you can write it out like this, or you put the CH2 in a bracket, we have one, two, three of them, so you put the three outside. So we have three consecutive CH2 groups. So you just put the CH2 group in a bracket, then you put a three outside. 
at the end of the final CH2 group, what comes after is a next CH3 group. We don't put the CH3 groups in a bracket because they did not come one after the other. One is at this end and the other is at the next end. These were put in a bracket because they followed each other one after the other. All right, so either of these condensed formula can work, whichever you prefer. All right. Just remember, when you're on the exam, if you're joining this line, the vertical lines to separate them, do it in pencil and erase it afterwards. So don't leave them on your diagram like that. Right. So that is that. Now let me do two examples of naming compounds, and then we we'll move on to isomers. All right, in naming this compound, what is the first thing that we should do? Sorry, is the amount of carbon you have? Right, so how many carbons do we have? Three. So if it's three, it should be called what? Prope. Right, and it's an alkane, so it is? Propane. Propane, all right. So three carbons, that means it is propane. Now, what's the second thing that we should do? Sir, identify the Sir, is it the substance, the substance, the um the substance substitute group, right? Yes, Look if you have anything other than hydrogen attached to the carbon. Bro, we are but we don't call it BR bromine. We are going to call it bromo. Right. Bromo also. Right. So we look at how many carbons we have. Three carbons, so it is propane because it's also an alkene. And then we see that not all the groups attached to the carbon are hydrogens. One of them is bromine. So we know that the BR group we call it bromo. So we will say bromo propane. Now, what else should we do to complete the name? The the, right. That is correct. So which end of the molecule should we come from? The left side of the molecule or the right side? Right side. And right. tell us why. Because this is the closest. That is correct. We always count from the end that is closest to our group. So if we count from this end, first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, the BR group would be on the third carbon if we start counting from the left side. One, two, three. So it would have been three bromopropane. But if you start counting from this end, then this would be carbon one. And so the bromine is attached to carbon number one. So we always choose the lower number. So we're not going to say three bromopropane. We are going to say one bromopropane. Good job. And this one, again, how many carbons do we have? 
four, which is right. mutating. So mutating, all right. What should we do afterwards? I look for your sub. Right. Yeah. And do we have any of them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We yeah. have chlorine. We have chlorine. Bromine. Bromo. And we also have bromo again right here. So we have a total of three. So which one, is it the bromo or the chloro that will appear first in the name? Bro. Which one? Tell us why, Bro. tell us why. Because uh, we started at the... Right, we list them in alpha, vertical, yes. or yes. right. So it would be bromo and then chloro, all right. Now, which end should we start counting from? The left side or the right side? The left side. Left side is correct because obviously the substituents are closer to this, as this end. So that means this is our first carbon and this is our second carbon. So how many bromo groups do we have? Two. So when we have two or more of this of the same substituent, what should we do? Sir, so it's gonna be dim. Di. Di. And if it was three, we should put what? Tri. And four is. Tetra. Right. So because we have two bromo groups, we say di di bromo. Now, where on which carbon atoms are the two bromo groups attached? One and two. All right, so it's one comma two dash. Mm -hmm. So remember, we use a comma to separate the two numbers. So and a dash to separate the number from the word. So it's one comma two dash dibroma. No, on which carbon is the chlorine? Two. All right, so dash, two, dash. So it's one, two, dibromo, two, chlorobutane. All right, so that's it. So just remember, if you have different substituents, you list them in alphabetical order. Um, right here, let me just point out something. And notice this name technically it starts with a D, right? Dibromo. And notice? Yes, sir. And this starts with a C. So C should come before D, right? Yes, sir. However, the alphabetical order rule, we don't apply the prefix to it. So the prefix, when we're placing the groups in alphabetical order we don't use the prefix so we still say it's bromo then chloro right so we don't account for the prefix when we're placing them in alphabetical order even though we have dibromo we still say it's bromo and it should come before chloro is that clear Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to move on to isomers. Just a second.
Right. When we get carbon compounds to name, right? We normally, so far, I've given you all of them in a straight line, right? So in this one, it is not in a straight line. It starts out in a straight line and then we, it turns, right? It comes down. So this is going in a straight line, but this goes straight and then we have a turn. So when you're counting, right? You're counting one, let me write it. You're going to count in one continuous direction. And the key word here is continuous, right? Just imagine these carbon chains as a road. If you are driving on a road, right? From point A to point B, when you get to this point, are you going to stop or are you going to turn? Which one is it? If you are going from point A to point B, when you reach point X, are you going to stop? Are you just turn and come and continue? Turn, sir. Right, and continue down to B. So it's the same thing here. If you are counting, when you say one, two, three, when you get to this carbon, you do not stop. This carbon is attached to this carbon. What I'm showing you is how to identify the carbon atoms at the end of a chain. This carbon atom here is not the end. It cannot be at the end because it is attached to this carbon and this carbon. So this carbon here, this carbon here is not the is not an end carbon. It is attached to this carbon and this carbon. Once it is attached to two carbons, it is not at the end of the chain. If you look at this carbon and this one, these two carbons are at the end because they are only attached to one other carbon. So if we're counting this, right? One, two, three, four carbons are in this chain. And if it's four carbon, it is called butane. Now, if you look at this carb, if you look at this chain, and we are counting properly, one, two, three, this is not the end, you have to continue, come down. So it's one, two, three, four. So this is four carbon. Once it's four carbon, it is still butane. Now, notice the shape of the two structures are different. So you have to bear in mind this right here. You are counting in one continuous direction. Continuous means if when you get to this point, you do not stop. You have to continue because this is not the end. All right? Everybody clear on this? Yes, sir. All right. So let me just make it more clear with this. This compound here, right? Four carbons. Start from this end, one, two, three, four, right? Notice it is not straight across. One, two, three, four, but we're still counting in one continuous direction. This is connected to this, to this, to this. Four carbon compounds in one continuous direction. Just a second again.
All right. Look. So we have four carbon atoms here. We also have four carbon atoms here. Is it possible for you? All right, let's count and see what happens. Let's say we are counting the amount of carbon atoms in one continuous direction. If you start from here, one, two, what happens when you get to the middle carbon? Can anybody tell me? Sorry, yeah. I wouldn't turn. Mm -hmm. Continue. I wouldn't turn because it's not on the end. It's in the middle. Okay, so it's not continuous. But you, but you have to continue to the end. So as in, when you get to the middle one, you have a decision to make, right? Yes. Either you continue across or you continue come down. But you cannot account for everything, right? So when you're counting one, two, when you get to this one, you realize what? Two different carbon atoms are attached to it. So you have to choose. So this is like a junction or a branch. When you get to this carbon, two other carbon atoms are attached to it. So you're going to have to choose, all right? Unlike with this one, this one right here, when you get to this one, how many other carbon atoms are attached to it? So ignoring these here, this carbon atom, how many carbon atoms are attached to it? One. One. So because it's only one that is attached to it, you don't have a choice. So you have to continue coming down. Just like if this was a road, right? The traveling, when you reach to point X, you don't have any choice but to continue down to B. But with this, what is happening? When you are counting, one, two, three. So if these three carbons are in a chain, right? What do you think this is, this carbon down here? Is it part of a chain or is it a branch? So it is a branch. A branch. It is a branch. Um, just a second. I'm using these to represent hydrogen. So again, this is our chain, right? With the three carbon atoms, we, we agree on that. So this one that is attached to, to the chain, we say it is a branch. So what do we call a carbon atom that is a branch? And it also has three hydrogens. So a carbon atom with three hydrogens, what do we call it? Anybody remember from last week? Sir, um, methyl. Methyl is correct. So a carbon atom with three hydrogens is called methyl. But remember, it is only called methyl when it is what? A branch. So this is our chain, one, two, three carbons. This is our branch. And once you have a branch, so the carbon atom is the branch. And it has three hydrogens. So carbon with three hydrogen, that is a methyl group. Let me put it on the board as well. So that's the one with the four carbons in a straight line. What I am showing you is this. This is what I'm showing you. So we have three carbon atoms in one direction, in one continuous direction. So this is the chain, all right? 
This is our main chain. This right here, this carbon here, it is not a part of this chain, so we call it a branch. So it is a branch chain. All right? So carbon atoms are what makes up our chain. This is our main chain. This carbon atom here is not a part of it, so it is a branch chain. All right? Let me just do something here. So the, the question I want to ask, right? This is C H3 group. Is it a metal group? No, sir. No. Tell me why. Because you are correct. It's not branch. Sir, it's not a branch. It is not a branch. It's Thank you very branch. much. It is Thank not a branch. Right. So even though it's CH3, it is not a branch. One, two, three, four. We count in one continuous direction. But here, one, two, three. You notice we ignore this. When we're counting, so it is a branch. And the CH3 that is a branch, that is what we call methyl. So this is our methyl group. All right? Now, the reason I'm pointing this out, when we're doing isomers, you will have to draw compounds with different structure. Now, students will draw different shapes and assume it's a different structure. Shape and structure is, are two big different things when it comes to this, right? Because if you look at this compound, one, two, three, four carbon atoms are connected in one continuous direction. One, two, three, four. If you look at this, four carbon atoms are connected in one continuous direction. Are these two shapes the same? Yes or no? Are these two sh shapes the same? No. No. This is going horizontally straight across, right? But this goes straight and then it comes down. So the shapes are different. Now, in the longest continuous chain, how many carbon atoms do we have here? In this four. Compound, four. And when you have a comp an alkane with four carbons, what is it called? What do you call an alkane with four carbons? Butane. So how many carbon atoms do we have over here in that chain? Four. And, and what do we call a car an alkane with four carbons? Butane. Butane. So you realize the shape of these two structures are different, but when you look at the name, the name is the same, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the reason why the name is the same is because you did not change the structure. To change the structure, so no. We have two compounds here. How many carbon atoms? Let me remove the hydrogen. So we have two compounds here. How many carbon atoms are in each of them? Four. 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 Right. Now, when we're counting, how many carbon atoms are in our main chain in this one? 
So four. Start, starting from here. One, oh, is it four? Because four. Right. One, two, three, four. Right. Three, four. Right. Four. Right. 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 But how many carbons are in the main chain? Three. Three. One, two, three. That is our chain. One, two, three. One continuous direction. So you cannot say one, two, three, then come back up, go across, and say four. One continuous direction. So one, two, three. Three carbons. If you have an alkene with three carbons, what is that called? Propane. Propane is correct. And then we have a branch. A carbon atom with three hydrogens, that is a branch. What is it called? Methyl. Methyl. So we agree that three carbons are in the main chain. So that is propane. And then we have a methyl group. Now, which carbon is the methyl group attached to? The second one. The second, second one. So it's not going to be called just propane. It is methyl propane. And the methyl group is on carbon two. So this compound here, This compound here, let me just put on the hydrogen now. So this right here, that's our methyl group. So we have three carbons in the main chain. So we know that that is propane. We have a methyl group here, CH3. When they see it written like this, or drawn like this, it doesn't matter. So whether it's condensed or displayed, it doesn't matter. Once it's CH3 and it is a branch, it is called methyl. So it is methyl propane. And it is on the middle carbon, the second carbon. So it is two methyl propane. All right. Let me just fix up these structures over here. So four carbons in a straight line, that's butane. No, if you count properly, let me just highlight it. We still have one, two, three, four carbons. 
So it is still butane. All right. Now the next thing I want us to do, let us check how many carbons and how many hydrogens are in each compound. So how many carbons are in this compound? Four. All right. So C4. How many hydrogens are present? Ten. All right. How many carbons are in this compound? Four. All right, C4. And how many hydrogens? Ten. All right. How many carbons are in this compound? Four. Three. Four. Three. Three. No, over. Oh, no, the total amount. Oh, four. Four. All right, so four. How many hydrogens? Ten. All right. So these three compounds, right? They all have the same molecular formula, right? Now, do all of them have the same name? No, sir. Right. Do all of them have the same structure? No, sir. No. These two have the same structure, right? Yes, but, sir. But this one, it has a different structure from this or this. So, whenever you have two compounds, with the same molecular formula, but their structures are different. What do you think that is called? Isomers. Isomers, correct. So what I've just shown you is isomerism. Let's just compare these two structures, butane here and two meter propane. Both of them have the same molecular formula, which is C4H10. But clearly, the structure is different. If the structure was the same, then the names would have been the same. So make it clear, these two, they are not isomers. The structure is not different. The reason being, the carbon atoms are connected to each other in one direction. So look here, let me ask a question. This is like as it is now, right? If does it have the same shape as before? No, sir. So it was like this, right? And then I did this. Did I change anything in the structure? No, sir. Good, but is the shape the same? No. Good. So what we're looking for in an isomer is different structure, not shape. Because even when it's shaped like this, one, two, three, four. All right? If we do this, is the shape the same? No. But did I change anything in the structure? No, sir. Right. So if you keep on changing the shape, you will keep on getting back the same name. One, two, three, four, that is butane. If you want a different structure, you have to take off a carbon. Take it off. See? If you want a different structure, you have to do some rearrangement. Not just change the shape, twist it up or whatever must take off one of the carbons at the end. Now, once I take off this carbon, how many carbons are in the chain now? Three. Three, all right. If I put it on this side, did I change the structure or the shape? Structure. <laughs> All right, if you say this structure was, was changed, right? Let's count. One, two, three, four. All of these are connected in one continuous direction, right? 
Can you see yes, that? Sir. All right. So what would be the name of this? Four carbons in the same direction. What is the name? Butane. 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 So let me take it off, Buck, because this is important for you to understand. If it is like this, what is the name? Butane. Butane. So look, you see if you take off the carbon at the end and you go to the next end of the molecule and put it there, you realize that one, well, let me use not this carbon. When you take it off, right? If you put it back at the end, at the next end, you realize you're getting back the same thing, right? Yes, sir. So when you take off, so when you take the carbon off the end, do not go and put it back at the opposite end. You are going to get back the same structure. So what you do is put it on a carbon atom in the middle. No. Is it the same structure? No, sir. No. Can you get four carbons in one continuous direction based on this? No, sir. No. One, two, three, or one, two, three. We cannot get the four of them in one continuous direction. So if you want a different structure, the first thing I want you to do, right? You would put the four of them in one continuous direction. Then you remove one from the end and put it on a carbon in the middle. That is how you change the structure. Is that clear? All right. So, okay. right. So, C4H10. It only has two isomers, butane and two methyl propane. All right? So these are the two isomers, butane and two methyl propane. All right? So if you want to take that off, I will give you a minute to take it off. And then we do our next example, which is pentane. One second, I'm going to plug in my phone. Is anyone writing? I want to know so I can erase. All right. So we're going to look at isomers of pentane, which is C5, H12. So when you get a molecular formula, right, are, are the compound, so they say they are isomers of pentane. The first thing I want to do, the first one I want to do to draw, so the first isomer, you are going to draw out all the carbon atoms in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five. That's your first chapter. Right? And as I said before, um, shall I go ahead and ask, your hand is raised? Is it by mistake? Shall I? All right, let's continue. Right, so your first structure, 
is to draw the five car bands in a straight line, all right? That's painting. When you want your second isomer, remove the carbon at the end. Now, if you remove this carbon, how many more carbons are left in the chain? Four. All right. So your second isomer, it will have four carbon atoms in the chain. Now, what did I just tell you? When you take off a carbon at the end, where should you put it? There in amigo. Right, put it on a carbon in the middle. So you can go ahead and put it on this carbon. Right? Just a second. So you can put it on a carbon in the middle. What would be the name of this compound? Butane. Butane, because it has four carbons. All right, good. And what else? Methane. What is it? Right, what do we have here? Methane. Right, a methyl group. On which carbon atom is it attached to? The second one. So it's two meter beauty. So you drop the, all the carbon atoms in a straight line. You remove one from the end. If you take off this, you have one, two, three, four carbon atoms remaining. And the one you take off, you put it on a carbon in the middle. Either this or this. If you put it here, it is two meter propane. I mean, two meter beauty. The next thing you will do is move the meat. If you have more carbons, more than one carbons in the middle, you will try and move it to a next carbon atom. So one, two, three, four. So we are going to move it from this carbon atom to this one. What would be the name of this compound? So is it C three methyl? C two methyl two, sir. Just a second. So it's methyl butane. That's for sure. But which carbon is the methyl group one? The second. The second, the second one. one. All right. So are these compound isomers of each other, or are they the same? The name is the same, right? Yes, sir. So once the name is the same, not an isomer. Clear? These two are the same thing. All I did, let me show you. So we have the four carbons here, right? Let me put on the hydrogens. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four carbons, right? So we have the four carbons, the metal group, So one, two, three, four carbons. This is the chain. One, two, three, four. This is the methyl group on carbon two. If I move it from this carbon and put it on this one, right? It's still one, two, three, four carbons, right? But if you come from this current direction, which is over here, it's the same thing, right? Can see that? Sorry, repeat. Sorry, re repeat what I said. All right. So I have four carbon compounds here, right? Yeah. And this, right, and this methyl group. So I put the methyl group on the carbon here. 
So which carbon is the methyl group on? The second. The second one. So if I remove this now, right, and put it on this carbon, which carbon atom is it on? Second. Exactly. Which carbon atom is it on? Second. Which carbon atom is it on? Second. You realize me just flip the molecule? That's it? Yes. Sir. So it is on carbon two here. All I did was flip the molecule. So you cannot say carbon three, all right? It is still carbon two. All I'm doing is flipping the molecule. See, the structure did not change. All right? So they are not isomers of each other. For it to be an isomer, something in the structure must be the same. Because you are joining it, it might look different. So you say, here it's on carbon two, but here it's on the third carbon. But if you follow the rules for naming compounds, you name the compound, you start counting from the end process to the substituent. In this case, it's the methyl group. So if you start counting from this end, the methyl group is on carbon two. So these two are not isomers of each of each other. No, so you draw a pentane, right? Any of these two can work with pentane, right? Because both of them are different from pentane. But if you draw this, you cannot draw this, right? So this structure is different from this structure. So both are correct. But this one is the same thing as this. So it is not an isomer. So, once you cannot move the methyl group to a next carbon to get a different name, you are going to come back again and remove a next carbon. So we are going to remove a next carbon. If you remove this carbon, how many carbons are left in the chain? There are three. Three. All right. One. Two, three. Now, how many carbons are in the middle of the chain at this point? One. One, right? I remember we have a metal group already, and we say it must be on the middle carbon. And we have a next carbon we just take off. So, where should we put it? There at the top. Right. So, we have to put it on the middle carbon. So both of them must go in the middle. Remember, once you take a carbon from the end, put it on a carbon in the middle. In the first instance, two carbon atoms were in the middle of the tree. So it could go on any one of them. But when you take off on the next one now, only three carbon atoms are left. That means you only have one middle carbon all right so that is that now if you try to take off a next carbon right how many carbon atoms are left in the chain two right so you have two carbon atoms in the chain and the branch are the substituent groups it will be a total of one two Three, the substituent groups, it cannot be greater than your main chain. So at this point, the chain, the chain has three carbons and the branch has two carbons, right? So the chain must be greater than the, than the branch. If I take off a next carbon, then the chain would have two carbons and the branch would have three carbons and that cannot work. 
So once we reach a point where if you take a next carbon off, the chain is smaller than the branch that is where you stop. Right? That means we stop here. We cannot take off anymore. Because if we take off the next one, then the branch is going to be larger than the chain. And that cannot work. So if I take off this, anywhere I put it, the chain would actually become four, but I don't want to confuse it, all right? So just know that when you get to the point where if I take off a next carbon, then the chain is going to be smaller than the branch, you stop. So the chain here has three carbons, and we have two methyl groups. Those are the branch. If I should take off the next one, then I would just have two in the chain. So it cannot work. So for C5H12, we have three isomers. Pentane, two meter butane, and I'm going to name this one. But the board is a little. Let me just make it less confusing or congested. All right. So we have pentane, and we said this is two methyl butane. Two methyl butane, and let me draw up this chapter now. That's our meter group, that's our meter group. Can someone name this compound for it? How many carbons are in the main chain? Three. And if it's three, it would be called what? Propane. Propane. Propane, all right. So let's start with that. Propane. Then, what is this substituent group again? Meter. Meter. Right, so methyl propane. And how many methyl groups do we have? Two. 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 So it would be called what? Two. So it would be called dimethyl, right? Yes. And where are the two methyl groups located? The second. Carbon two. All right. Both of them are on carbon two, right? Yes, sir. So it would be two, right? Two, two dimethyl propane. So the three isomers of pentane are pentane, the straight chain, then two methyl butane, and two two dimethyl propane. And in the passage that I've seen, they ask you either for isomers of pentane or isomers of butane. So for pentane, these are the three isomers: pentane, two methyl butane, and two two dimethyl propane. So you need to remember how to draw them, all right? So that's isomers. We're going to do the reactions of alkenes, all right? So if anybody is writing, you can take that off. I will give you a minute. Is anybody writing at the moment? All right, I can hear you. So I'm coming. No, it is. 
I was asking if anyone was still writing. No. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the reactions of alkenes, we have three of them. Combustion. Right. Elogination. Right. Sometimes we might say substitution. The third one is cracking. So these are the three reactions for alkenes. Combustion, halogenation, and cracking. All right. So I'm going to start with combustion. So combustion is simply the burning of an alkene. And you, you probably know or should know that for any fire to exist, it needs oxygen. All right. So when we are combusting or in the equation, for combustion, oxygen will be there, right? The combustion it may be complete or incomplete. Now the products of combustion, carbon dioxide and water. So for complete combustion, which is when sufficient oxygen is present, you will get carbon dioxide and water. If the oxygen supply is not sufficient, right? It's inadequate. You will get carbon monoxide instead and water. All right, so we're going to start with combustion. So, for example, you will have the alkene propane and you react it with oxygen. You will get carbon dioxide and water. So this is complete combustion. It would mean that the oxygen is sufficient, right? In the question, if they tell you that the oxygen supply is insufficient or inadequate, this is what the equation will look like. Everything is basically the same, except instead of carbon dioxide, you will get carbon monoxide. And so this is incomplete combustion. All right. So if you are given any alkane, just react it with oxygen, and you will always get carbon dioxide and water if it's complete, or carbon monoxide and water if it's incomplete combustion. Now, once you do this, all you have to do is balance the equation. We're going to balance it in the order, carbon, hydrogen, then oxygen. So we're going to balance the carbon atoms first, then hydrogen, then oxygen. So on the reactant side, how many carbon atoms do we have? Three. Three. How many do we have on the product side? Seven have none. Yes. One. 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 Right. Right here. Mm -hmm. Right. So how many do we need over here? Three. Right. Now the only place that we can put on number is in front, right? Yep. So we already have one, and when you put a number in front, it multiplies the atoms in the compound, right? So you have one carbon, so three 
Turn one is three. So that is how we balance carbon simply by putting a three in front of the compound. When I put the three in front, it multiplies all the atom in the compound. So we have one carbon and two oxygen, but we're not looking at the oxygen as yet. One carbon times three, so that's a total of three. So now three carbon is here and three is here. How many hydrogens do we have? Eight, sir. Eight. How many hydrogens do we have here? Two. 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 So what times two will give you eight? Four. four. All right. So I put a four in front. All right. Now, how many oxygen do we have for CO2? All right. How many oxygen is in CO2? Uh, six. Six. Six, sir. Oh. Before we get to the three, how many is present? Right. So two, as I said, two times three, that is six oxygen. All right. So we have six oxygen here. How many oxygen is in, in water? Four. In, in four. How many is in water? One. Right. So one times four? Four. All right. So we have six in CO2 here plus four in water, that's a total of? 10. All right. So we have 10 oxygen on that side. How many do we have on this side? Two. All right, so two times what is 10? Five. All right. So our equation is now balanced. We're going to do the same thing again here. Start with carbon. How many carbons do we have here? Three. How many do we have over here? One. One, One times what will give us three? Three. three. All right. So now we have three carbons. How many hydrogens do we have here? Eight. eight. What times two will give us eight? Four. Four. All right. So now, how many oxygen do we have here? Three. Right. One times three. So that's three oxygen. And how many oxygen do we have here? Four. Four. Right. One times four. So let me just put that just in case anybody don't get it. So four times one. So four times one oxygen, that's all we get the four. Three and one oxygen, that's all we get the three. Sorry. So it's here, we can stay here. That's the four oxygen, the four times two, that is all we get, the eight hydrogens. All right, four times two, eight hydrogens. All right. So we said we have a total of how many oxygen now? Three oxygen yeah. here plus four. So that's a total of seven. Two times what will give you seven? 3.5. 3.5 three and a half. All right. So we cannot use a decimal in the equation. So we know that three and a half times two is seven. So three and a half as an improper fraction, that would be seven over two, right? Yes. Sir. All right. So here what? For combustion, the equation, whenever you get an odd number for oxygen, so whenever you get an odd number for oxygen over here, just come over here and put it over two. So you get seven oxygen over here. All you need to do is put seven over two. Uh, seven over two is an improper function of four, three and a half. And your three and a half times two is seven. All right? So if you have gotten nine oxygen over here, what would you have put in front? Nine over two. Nine so, over sir, two. Wait, yes. uh, suppose I did 
to use the mix number. Would I get it wrong? No, man, because it's, it's three and a half times two is two is seven, right? Yeah. So, so I was just saying, once you get an odd number, just put it over two. Because what you have done is use an improper fraction, right? So nine over two, right? If you have that nine over here, right? 4.5 times two is nine. So four and a half, as an improper fraction is nine over two. Three and a half as an improper fraction is seven over two. Two and a half as an improper fraction is five over two. So that is where I said, once you get an odd number, just put it over two and you're good. All right. Do you want me to work on the next one? All right, good. Well, good. Well, I am. Hmm? All right. So we're going to work on the next one. All right. Please. And right off these two, already? No, Let me know when you are finished. Finished, sir. Okay. And what is still writing? All right, I know some students, they are, they are used to listing all the atoms. So I'm going to do it that way in this example. So on this side, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Over here, it's the same thing, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. How many carbon do we have here? Five. Five. <laughs> And how many do we have over here? One. One. Yes? Who said sir? I know. They can ask you that if you want. All right, so we have five carbon over here and one over here. So one times what will give a five? Five. All right. So we just put a five in front of the CO2. So now all of so the carbon atom, it is now balanced. How many hydrogens do we have over here? Twelve. All right. How many do we have over here? Two. Two times what will give us twelve? Six. And so two times six is equal to twelve. So we need to put a six in front. All right. How many oxygen do we have over here? Two. All right. Now, how many do we have here? Ten. All right. Five times two. All right. So we have ten. How many do we have here? Six. All right. Six times one, that is six. So the oxygen over here, it is ten plus six, that is 16. So two times what will give you 16? Eight. Right. Now eight is not an odd number. I mean 16 wasn't an odd number. So we didn't need to put it over two. So two times eight is 16. So we put eight in front of it. All right? So, all right. So that is it. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to substitution. 
a theorem of this. Let me know when you are finished. Finish. All right. All right, so again, how many bonds does carbon always form? Four. Four. And it cannot form any more than the four. All right. So halogenation. All right. And this reaction occurs by substitution. Now, if you are asked, what is the characteristic reaction of alkenes? The characteristic reaction of alkene is substitution. And for alkene, it is addition. Right, and next week we will see why it is addition. But for alkanes, it is substitution. So let's look. The, as we know, the black is carbon and the white ones are hydrogen. So carbon on the form, four bonds. So in the alkanes, it has four single bonds. If we want to put something else on it, just a second. Let us say that this is chlorine. If I want to put chlorine on it, and this carbon, so remember, carbon only forms four bonds. At this moment, this is methane, CH4. Can I go ahead and just put carbon on it? No, it's okay. there. And there's no error, because each hole in the carbon atom represents a space where a bond can be formed. But there's so every the four spaces are filled. There's no way to put this right. So what do you think I would have to do if I want to put the chlorine onto the carbon atom? What would I have to do? So I would have to remove a hydrogen. Right? Wonderful. Then put a height, then I can put on the chlorine. So what did I just do? A word. Deduction or subtraction? Substitution. Substitution, exactly. Yeah. So I just substituted the hydrogen for the chlorine. And that is it. So halogenation, remember, the halogens are group seven, right? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So all we're doing is replacing a hydrogen with a halogen. So group seven elements are called halogens. So we are replacing the hydrogen with a halogen. And that is the reaction. Now halogens are diatomic molecules, all right? So they exist, so two atoms exist. So they exist as a pair. They are diatomic molecules. They exist as a pair. So if this was chlorine, it would be Cl2. So this is methane, right? CH4. And this is chlorine, Cl2. So if I want to put chlorine onto the methane, what has to happen here first? I have to take off one of the chlorine. Atoms. Wonderful, right. So you have to take off a chlorine, and then what next now? What has to happen next? You take off a hydrogen off of the meter. All right. So just to note, so the starting material are the reactants for this 
reaction is Cl2, which is your chlorine, plus your alkane. In this case, it is methane. So it is CH4 plus Cl2. And they are saying the first thing that needs to happen, we must take off a chlorine, right? So we must break the bond between the two chlorine atoms. And then I need to remove a hydrogen. So this is what happens in the, in the reaction. No, Wait, what should we do? Yeah, go ahead. Yes? Uh, methyl is both a hydrocarbon and a halogen. Please repeat. Methyl is both no. a halogen. No, no, no. No, the chlorine. Chlorine, that is the halogen. Oh, in this case. No, man, in any case. So group seven elements, we call them halogens. So any, yes. right, so any element in group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, we refer to them as halogens. So the reaction, halogenation, is because we are adding an halogen to an alkane. All right? So the chlorine, that is the halogen. It could be bromine as well. All right? So as the student was instructing me, when the reaction is occurring, I need to take off a chlorine, all right? So separate the two chlorine atoms, and I need to take off a hydrogen as well. Now, what should be formed as a result? Or right, tell me what to do. The person that was talking or instructing me. What should happen next? The person that was instructing me, what should I do next? So I take off the hydrogens, what happens next? Oh, yes, yeah, substitute one of the chlorine. All right, so put the chlorine now on the carbon. Yes, sir. All right. And so I will get CH3Cl, right? Yes, sir. And what happened to this hydrogen and this chlorine atom? Uh, then, then they will the what? Right, they will form a bond, and so we get HCl. So we get CH3Cl and HCl. Anybody remember what we started out with? Sir, you started out with um, CL2. CL2 and? The um, CH3. CH4. CH4. Right. I will end up with HCl and CH3Cl. So we substituted a chlorine atom for a hydrogen atom. So let us put that now in the form of an equation. So we start out with CH4. We reacted it with Cl2. And what did we end up with? CH3Cl. All right. We end up with CH3Cl plus HCl. Yeah. HCl. Correct. Let me just draw the structure so I can do it both ways. I can use the molecular formula or I can do it like this. All right. So it's CH4 plus Cl2. And we got CH3 Cl plus H Cl. All right. So if you look at the products and look at the reactants, all we did, let me use the blue marker. So let's put the chlorine in blue. Or no, the, the hydrogen that gets substituted in blue.
So if you look, the only thing that changed, right? This hydrogen, is it still a part of the methane over here? The blue hydrogen? No. no. All right, let me, just a second. Let me put this chlorine in blue. So what happened to the chlorine in blue? Sir, it it um formed a bond with the methyls. Right. So this chlorine replaced this hydrogen, right? So the two of them switched places. That is why you see the blue hydrogen with the black chlorine, and the blue chlorine is now attached to the carbon. That is why it is substitution. These two, these two. They are substituting each other. So substitution occurred. So the hydrogen and the chlorine, they substitute each other. So the chlorine went where the hydrogen was, and the hydrogen went where the chlorine was. All right? So in the form of an equation, we just put methane plus Cl2, give you CH3Cl plus 8Cl. So that is what happens in halogenation. Now, whether they give you methane or ethane, any alkene, you just substitute the hydrogen for the chlorine. All right? So that is what happens in substitution. So you can take it off and then we do cracking. So the, the final reaction now is cracking. Also, for this, the reaction, the condition is UV light. So if they ask you for this, so over the arrow, when you're doing it, when you're writing the equation, UV light, put that over the arrow. Right, so the reaction it won't occur unless it is in the presence of UV light. So you will have to carry it out in the sunlight, which has UV, right? So if they ask you for the condition for this reaction, the condition is UV light. So just make a note. Condition UV light. So the final reaction now is cracking. And I'm going to put a definition on the board.
So cracking is the process by which long chain saturated hydrocarbons. So saturated hydrocarbons, they are alkenes. So we say alkanes are saturated and alkenes are unsaturated. So cracking is the process by which long chain saturated hydrocarbons are broken down into smaller saturated hydrocarbons as well as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Simply put, you have a long chain alkane and you are breaking it down into smaller alkane and alkene. All right? So breaking large alkenes into smaller alkenes and alkenes. All right? So you can put the breakdown, alternatively, the breakdown of large alkene molecules into smaller alkenes. and alkenes. So it's the breakdown of large alkenes into smaller alkenes and alkenes. Let me know when you're finished. Or if anybody is still writing, let me know. Say I'm So cracking, we're going to use equations to represent the process of cracking. So it's a simple process. I'm going to start with the molecular equation. So if we have the alkene, right? C7H60, right? And we're going to crack it. By definition, we must get alkane and alkene. Right, so let's say we well, we only want one alkene and one alkene. Now the choice is up to you. You are given an alkene. This is heptane, and you are supposed to write an equation to show how you can get an alkene and then an alkene from the cracking heptane of seven carbons. Just tell me how many carbon atoms do you want the alkene to have and how many carbon atoms do you want the alkene to have? Anybody? It's your choice. How many yeah, carbons? Four. Do you get? Four. four. For the alkene? Yes. All right. And how much for the alkene? Three. All right. Now, based on the general formula, if the alkane has four carbons, how many hydrogens should it have? Eight. Ten. How much? Ten. Ten. And if an alkane has three carbons, how many hydrogens it should have? Six. 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 
Now, the total amount of carbon and hydrogens on the product side, it must equal to what is on the reactant side. So we have seven carbons, four here and three here. So we have the seven carbons, that's okay. We have 16 hydrogens, so we have 10 and six, that is 16. And that is cracking. You have a larger alkane, and you break it down into a smaller alkane and an alkene. No, still on heptane, C7, H16, instead of two products, I want three products. All right. So again, for each product, A, B, C, tell me how much carbons do you want A to have? So you have a total of seven. How many do you want A to have? Two. All right, so C2. How many do you want B to have? Three. All right, so that's C3. That means C would have to have how much? Two. Two, all right. So that would give us two and three is five, five and two is seven. So that's take care of the, um, the number of carbons. So let's go. Compound A, do you want to make it an alkene or an alkene? Alkene. 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 Oh, right. alkene. All right. So if it's an alkene, how many hydrogens must be present? Four. All right. Do you want to make B an alkene or an alkene? Alkene. All right. So if it's an alkene, how many hydrogens should it have? A. All right. Now, before we do C, let's check how many hydrogens we have used already. How many is here? Four. Four. All right. And how many is here? Eight. So four and eight, how much we used already? Twelve. All right. So 12 from the 16, how much, how much we have leave? Four. Four. So we have 16 over here, and we use 12 already. So we have four remaining. That means C has to be an alkene. You see that? Because if you made it an alkene, what would happen? We would have more hydrogen. Exactly. And we cannot have more hydrogen in the products than the reactants because this is what we are breaking down. So we can have 16 hydrogen here and 18 over here. So it has to be 14. So when you have, if you are breaking an alkane into three products, right? Make one an alkene and one an alkene. Then you see how much hydrogens you have remaining. All right. Or uh, if you can remember, once they ask you for three products, two of them must be alkene. All right. Once they ask you for three products, two of them must be alkene. All right. But if you forget that, just follow the process. Divide the carbon atoms, right? Once you divide up the carbon atoms, you make one an alkane and one an alkene. Then you see how much hydrogen is left and you give it to the third one. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. And if they wanted this chapter, the, the display formula, you can do it like the same way, and then you just draw the structure for each of them. All right? So if they ask you for the displayed formula, you will just draw it out. So I'm going to do it for over here. I don't have enough space. Sir, right. sir, yes. what they would ask us, the display formula for the reactant side and the product side? They can ask. For the whole equation. All right? 
But if they just ask you to, if they just ask you for an equation, just go ahead and use the molecular formula. All right. But let us just draw it out for the alkene. It will be C2H4. And next week we will look at alkenes. Then C3H8. And then C2H4 again. C2H4. And over here we have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I put on your hydrogens. All right. So you have the seven hydrogens. You get ethene, propane, and the next molecule of ethene. All right. I'm going to put some partial questions on the board for homework. And when we come next week, we will work them. All right. So take off this, and then I put them on the board, and I practice them. And next week, when I come, we will work them. Anybody is still writing? This is from 2016, number five.
Oh, this one was two marks, and this is two marks as well. All right, when I finish right this year, let me know. I'm going to put one on isomers and then we'll close. But if anybody is writing, let me know. This is from 2014. All right, so that is it. Let me know when you finish writing. I'm going to stop recording. 
So the link, it's this, it's the same link every week.